I welcome you back for a quick stop in studio. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris McKendry. John McEnroe joins me. John, happy slam season. Happy New Year to you, Chris. I mean, listen, I've been part of some chaotic scenes in Australia. <laughs> I was responsible for some of them, not all of them. <laughs> I, only time I ever got defaulted was at the Australian Open, but what's gone on the last 12 days tops everything. That is total and utter chaos. Absolute joke what's gone on the last 12 days. It's sad the way it ended. It is, uh, I watched Saturday Night Live. The guy playing Joe Biden said, I wanna know what the hell's going on with Novak Djokovic, this is like two hours before they decided to deport, me, th deport him. I mean, after all this, I don't even know where to begin. Which part of it you s try to analyze? The part where, why wasn't he vaccinated? The part where suddenly he got COVID? The part where they granted him a visa? The part when he started to fly and then they said, oh, there's a lot of people complaining, so we're going to cause problems mm -hmm. at th the customs area. Let him out. Oh, then by the way, we've decided to renege it for a second time, and then he keeps fighting. I actually texted Novak during this. It's total BS. Once, I mean, listen, if he decides not to have a vaccine and the Australian authorities say to him, you cannot go down there unless you're vaccinated, end of story, it's black or white. He decides whether or not he wants to do it. He's got very strong beliefs. He's entitled to those beliefs. The guy's won it nine times. I mean, I tell you, it was gutsy in a way. I got to hand it to him in a way because that's, I had seven majors, he's got 20. The reason he's got a lot more than me, that he was willing to go risk that, to go down there well, not being he vaccinated. thought he had the right paperwork. He thought he had permission to go. He thought he had a medical exemption. And there was so much blame to go around, John. The government came well, out looking extremely silly. Djokovic to have possibly the greatest to ever play certainly the winningest champion end up a punchline on saturday night live is not the way you want to see the sport go that is the bad news of the week what happened to djokovic and i want to get chrissy to chime in on this too because All both right. of you have seen so much but let's bring chris everett in to join our coverage she's joining us throughout the tournament from boca mm -hmm. her home and two nights ago chrissy told the world that she is fighting ovarian cancer very successfully. It was found early, stage one. Chrissy, we put the story out on ESPN.com. You are right now in the midst of your chemotherapy. How are you feeling today? <laughs> I feel good today. I, um, I actually had my chemo last Monday. And, you know, it's rough for three or four days. Um, I mean, I, had no, I didn't know how I was going to feel, but uh, it was rough. Um, but after three or four days, you know, I, I feel fine today. Now I'm actually getting six chemos, um, one every three weeks. So I have in between then a good two, two and a half weeks to feel good. So, you know, I'm, Chris, as you know, and I want to thank you also as my friend and, and journalist for framing my story in such a clear and concise way. And I, you, you did it. You did a great job and thank you for putting in the time. But as you know, it was important for me to get all of that information out um, because ovarian cancer is an insidious and it's a very sneaky cancer. And um, I mean, I, I just feel so fortunate that if it wasn't for the call that I received from my sister's um, geneticist saying that Jeannie's BRCA had, they had found a new mutation and now Jeannie's BRCA gene had turned from negative to positive and you and your siblings better go get tested because there's a 50 percent chance you will be positive as well and don't you know um i got tested the next day and the blood work took like 10 days but when i was positive i knew there was no choice to be made and i think i, I was really surprised how many people don't know about the BRCA gene um, everybody has the BRCA gene, but if you have a mutation with the BRCA gene, then you have a 70 or 80 percent chance of, of getting either ovarian or breast cancer um, in your lifetime. So, I mean, I know that's very graphic, but it's something that needs to, people need to be educated and know their family medical history. And that's what you wanted to do with your story. You wanted to empower women, empower mm -hmm. men with knowledge and information and the reaction your story and the reaction, your bravery of putting such personal information out there, 
it's just been incredible. And I know you've heard from so many people and survivors and other women and men going through these circumstances. What has then that felt like for you? Well, first of all, you know, when you get cancer, I don't think that's the time to be timid or that's the time to isolate yourself because I need people too. And um, it's been overwhelming, the response, especially from the tennis world. And not only the people in the tennis world, like the, the journalists and tournament directors and everything, but the players, the players of every generation, especially this generation, have reached out to me. And I'm like, whoa, you know, it, it just, it clearly means so much to me. So um, you do need that support system, you know, when you do get cancer. And, um, but at, at the same time, thousands and millions of women and men have gotten this, have, have had cancer. So I'm, you know, I'm, it's nothing new and I'm just one of many and it, it really is an equalizer in, in the whole scheme of things. Well, Chrissy, you know I have a soft spot for you. You know I love you. We are all pulling for you up here. Uh, you, I've watched you play over the years and know you as a human being and um, we wish you the absolute best, but if this uh, battle with the cancer is anything like the battles you had with your opponents <laughs> I would say that this cancer has absolutely no chance so look forward to seeing you in person very soon thank you John that's yeah. very sweet uh, not, not a lot of people realize how sweet John McEnroe is but take my word for it he's a very sweet human being well it takes a special person <laughs> to bring out that side in John which clearly you're <laughs> able to do <laughs> We, we've Love had him. a lot of Love laughs him. over I think we, we, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have. We've had a lot of arguments. We've had a lot of laughs. Mm -hmm. I, I used to tell John all the time, you're my dad's favorite yes. player. And I was like, what? My dad told me to be quiet on the court. How, is that, <laughs> how does that work? But anyway, Chrissy, I love you too, John. Chrissy, John just uh, yeah. was, was talking about the Novak Djokovic situation, and, and I know everyone's exhausted of it. It's been a long 11, 12 days, and, yeah. and it's just been a story. It's been impossible to keep up with practically. But what's your take on everything that you've watched go down and, and where we've ended up? Well, I, you know, I, I sort of agree with John in the sense that, I mean, I think Novak was misled, really, into believing um, his medical exemption was approved. It was obviously approved by Tennis Australia and the Victorian government, but not by the federal government, not by the border. And those three entities um, were very disconnected. And they weren't really agreeing on, you know, what is the premise to which you can get into the country. But at the end of the day, nobody's above the law and everybody should, there, there should be nobody exempt from the laws, especially when it applies to the health and the safety of a country. So I, I think it was the right decision. Very wishy-washy for so many days. Why didn't somebody have the you-know-what to just be firm in their beliefs? This is the law. This is what we're going to do, and you, you need to leave. But um, I don't know. It was, it was a debacle, and I'm just happy. I, I wish Novak um, the best, and, and I have a lot of respect for him in a lot of ways. I know he does a lot of good for his country and for kids and, and for the ATP Tour. But at the same time, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this tournament starting and now all the emphasis is on the players that are playing in the tournament. Here, here. It, 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 that's true, but you're talking about a guy that was about to potentially break Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal's record mm -hmm. and that he was willing to go to these lengths. I don't want to get vaccinated, but I'm going to do whatever it takes. Here's what I, my question. He plays the Open. It's announced soon after that you have to be vaccinated in order to go to Australia. By the way, four of the five top male players were not vaccinated at the U.S. Open. At the Labor Cup, where I was at, they weren't vaccinated. Sissy Pass was not vaccinated. Uh, Medvedev was not vaccinated. Rublev was not vaccinated. Those three guys got vaccinated. What was Novak mm -hmm. thinking or doing during this period of time? Was he just deciding that, okay, either I'm not going to play or I'm going to, you know, they're going to change the law? That's one of the questions I would have to him. And then so, all of a sudden, mid December, I mean, you can't wait to mid December. And then suddenly you don't try to get this, right? Suddenly he got COVID and that allowed him to get the exemption. What? Yeah. And, okay. Let's assume that's all, you know, that he wasn't going to play, but then. Suddenly he got COVID and then he got an exemption. He can play. You can't tell him after he flies all the way there. The government, the, the, the idea that the government, these people weren't in cahoots with each other. I'm sorry. There was something don't, to the, don't, to don't, the I don't buy into that one. 
They all knew what was going on. On the plane, everyone started going up in arms. You heard Darren on the, on the opening. He said he was, you know, he quarantined for 28 days. Mm -hmm. 14 days when he got to Melbourne. Then the equivalent of going to New York to Miami, he gets quarantined 14 more days. Yeah. Now, that's why people, think, I get why they're up yeah. in arms, okay? But, but, but the, nonetheless, they granted this exemption. You can't do this after that. It's a joke. Chrissy, go ahead. Go ahead, Chrissy. Do you think, no, I just think public opinion yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's absolutely. new elections, new elections coming up. I mean, it's very absolutely. political. Well, and, that's what the Serbian you know, president said today, Chrissy. He was exactly. calling out the, the political yeah. play. And, you know, Novak yeah. put that tweet out that said, I'm coming to Australia. I have a medical exemption, gets on a plane and a firestorm yeah. started, clearly. I mean, people have their beliefs. Then there's the politics of it. Then there's the moral of it. Then the yeah. ethics of it. Then the safety. Yeah. Obviously. He's but, not, it's, it's, it's not like he, he's a, obviously one of the great athletes of our time. Yeah. So that's not the issue. The issue was that it was going to maybe get other people to do the same thing he did. Well, right. they didn't think of that beforehand? No. Everyone else got vaccinated. Two of players that we know of, one, the American tennis Sangren's not vaccinated. He didn't go. Okay, that's the rule. I'm not going. The others got vaccinated, and I think Sitsipas said it best. He's playing by his own rules. Well, he took a chance and he got burned, but that was, um, he's, he's not playing by his own rules. Those were the rules. The rules where you get vaccinated, that if it was end of black or white, okay. Or, or you get a, an exemption. Or, not just end of story. He wasn't playing by his own rules. He's playing by their rules. He got the exemption. You can not agree with it, but that's what that's what happened. He was this able. This is to no get way it. to go through your the rest of his career. I mean, how sustainable it's horrible. is this? This is this is this shows you how uh, deeply he believes this. The fact that he was willing, he was going to beat these other two guys, be considered the greatest ever. Now all of a sudden, everywhere he goes, they're going to be on him in a way again. He's going to be the bad guy even more than he's ever been. Chrissy, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean no it. Uh, <laughs> Look, Tennis Australia, the state of Victoria, okayed it. I mean, he had two independent panels that approved his medical exemption. I mean, mm -hmm. that was the case to get into, to play the tournament, to get into Victoria, to, to enter the tournament. All of a sudden, he goes to the border, and their border is saying, I'm sorry, we don't have that rule, and we didn't know anything about it. And, it, the, I mean, there is such a disconnect between those three um, powers that it's hard to believe, I'm sorry, maybe I, I, it's hard to believe they didn't I should know. say this, but it's hard to believe that would happen here in America. I mean, I, mean, I just don't understand how that can happen. But here's the other part that's happen. weird. Like uh, Djokovic apparently, <laughs> and I, listen, I'm a fan of Novak and I have a lot of respect for him, but supposedly he knew he had it and then he flew back and went to Serbia and that's what you're not allowed to do. And then he met with some journalists and allegedly and that, I don't know. that behavior came back to get him at this this second court hearing oh, the yes. judges spoke about it it was his the way he behaved criminal knowing he, he was infected that concerned them that he he spoke to a journalist in Serbia I believe I, I, I don't know the exact details of the dates but apparently I mean is that is that proven is that absolute he fact? it is he, the yes. he apologized yes, he you know journalists it. have been known to make no no case. no no Novak came out and said yes in fact I did that it was an error in judgment I didn't want to let the journalists down I see. Oh, so, well, that hurts. That hurts. I, I cringe. That hurt. I cringe. That, that, that hurts. Yeah, him. and it was the cameraman, cameraman as well as the journalist. And when I read that, I was like, it, I mean, it's borderline criminal to be uh, expose yourself when you have COVID to somebody knowingly. That's just, that's that's not good. That's not good. And uh, it's hard to. It's can, we hard to can, it's, can we get on the tennis? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know what? Actually, Chrissy, this, this, this took on a life of its own. <laughs> um, if, you, if you thought John was ever going to take it easy on you because you're battling right now, um, no. <laughs> but we are having you stay there for a minute. We're going to come back a little later and talk okay. about all the women in the field. I know there's quite a few. Chrissy's been watching I'll a lot of down tennis. To Florida and be with Chris so <laughs> we can do this together one day, okay? Oh, that would be great. Yeah. So 80 degree Chrissy, weather. Chrissy, sit tight. We're going to get back weather. to live tennis, and then I want you both to chime in on some of these players. It's just day one of the Australian Open.